Now on to your questions. First question. I am a new member who would like to purchase Apple and start a position, but I'm concerned that it's rallied too hard. Although the stock is rated at two, what, when is the right time? Okay, uh, yeah, it has run too much. It's at 160. Um, I would think, again, if I was using that five day percent pullback is when I would buy some if you uh, didn't own any. Number two, is Broadcom success depend on the success of Apple? It's da- I'm sorry, Daryl uh, Mechanicsburg, PA. Well, I like Mechanicsburg. I've been there many times. Okay, listen, this is, uh, this is really important. Uh, Broadcom, Avago, it's down $2.40. I'd buy it right here. Uh, they have worked mightily to be away from the Apple uh, and have other, uh, many, other, uh, many other 5G kinds of plays. They are very, very good, done a series of acquisitions. I think they're more diversified than people realize. All right. What is your rationale? Number three, uh, I'm favoring ATVI over Take Two Interactive. That's Chris, Christoph C. from Apopka, Florida. Been there too when I was a reporter in Tallahassee, Democrat. Okay, this is important. Uh, when I, you know, when I look at, um, oh, let me just, let me just scroll that back for a sec because I want to just phrase it correctly. Take Two was up 12. Should I have bought Take Two before him? Well, you know, I know Strauss selling pretty well, and I love. I don't like to play Grand Theft Auto or Mafia, but the problem is this. They're not as big in esports, and we are buying Activision Blizzard for the catalyst, for the catalyst of esports. And Take Two won't have it until later, even though they're tied in with the NBA. Esports has it now. It's not just a gaming company. All right. Now, uh, number four, what future catalyst of TJX do you believe will drive the share price? Russ S. from Cary, North Carolina. Okay, TJX went there yesterday. It's one, there's one in the building here. Um, TJX, 1.7% yield, reports next week, 71, it's down 5%. This is the most I've seen TJX underperform in ages, and I really think that this company is going to report a better number than people think. Why? Okay, one reason is because they have a lot of merchandise from the closing of Macy's and JCPenney. Two is, is that Matthew Boss does a really amazing job. He's at J.P. Morgan uh, on analyzing traffic, and he says there is upside here. I am going with him. All right, number five. City sits at a two in the portfolio. How much of a pullback is needed before buying more shares? 63. 63 is I would buy for us. Yes, it's that good. After sitting down with Mike Corbett, I realize it's that good. The book value is going up that much. Uh, those who don't own any, uh, just join the club, go to work. Buy some. Okay, uh, number six. Outside of updates from the Trump administration, what do you think it takes for Nucor to break back over 60? It's Kim from Middleton. Okay, um, Nucor, the next quarter I think should be better. Uh, remember, Nucor's got a long, long streak of outperformance. I do want an infrastructure stock. I want a cyclical. I would buy this stock with a 2.65% yield right here, right now. Uh, 232 would send it up. Looks like right now the 232 is not going to be declared. Maybe later. But I think the Chinese are playing with fire. All right, number seven. Do you consider Arconic a defensive stock in the portfolio, Rickby? No. I think that Arconic is a catalyst stock. They get a CEO. The CEO unwinds the company, sells the aerospace business. We get 30. Okay, number eight. I am looking to cash in on a profit, but I still want to own some shares. What is your approach in taking a profit, but leaving yourself room to play with house money? Well, Mike from King of Prussia, I used to play King of Prussia constantly uh, when I was growing up in Springfield High School, Montgomery County. And what I would do, you take your, you take your cost out. You take your cost out. Playing with the house's money is the way I made the most money when I was at my old hedge fund. And uh, I could do it here. I do feel, importantly, this is really important. I do feel that if you take a quarter off, if you're up really big, uh, that's not a bad idea either. But when you're playing with the house's money, it's ideal. So take it off. All right, number nine. What is a good cash allocation percent to maintain for possible future stock opportunities? Crystal from Johannesburg. Hi, Johannesburg. Wow. Uh, my wife went to South Africa two years ago and had the greatest time urging me to go, wants to go back. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, right now, we have a huge amount of cash because... We have some new stocks that we bought, and we just took profits. It's probably uh, actually too much cash for my take, uh, even though I know we've got this North Korean overhang right now. And I am interested in buying some stocks. Uh, but I think that you know, if you, had, if you could have 10 to 15% on the sideline, not 10, but 10 to 15, I think you're okay. I mean, I, you know, 10, in other words, not below 10. 
And that's because I think that we're going to have periodic statements from Trump about North Korea. Remember, I still don't believe there's going to be a war. Um, but that doesn't mean that you won't feel like there is one. Okay, number 10. How much of one sector, specifically tech, is too much to own in a portfolio? I would not own more than 20% tech. I think 20% tech, as much as tech is so great, I know. I mean, look, I understand that Facebook, I, look, I came up with Fang. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google should be Fang, obviously, because of Apple, two A's. Uh, and the end may be, after uh, what Disney's doing, the end may be NVIDIA. But, you know, I told you to buy Netflix this morning because Netflix is, doesn't need Disney as much as Disney may need Netflix. Or actually, it's kind of Disney's doing what it has to do. I think if Disney had that additional cash from Netflix, it would really tie them over. But 20 percent because you're too hostage to a group that could go down big on one big miss. How do people feel this morning when Netflix was down seven? You know what I mean? OK, number 11, for a portfolio of 35,000 to 40,000, how many stocks is ideal for reasonable risk mitigation? All right, 10 is reasonable risk mitigation. Five is how many you can do if you're doing it on your own. Let's split the difference and let's say eight. So that way you can use our portfolio and look at the ones you like. Maybe you like some oil. Maybe you want some tech. Maybe you want some healthcare. We have a pastiche. You don't buy all our stocks. We're doing the work. We're telling you which are ones and twos. And you can tell from our bulletins what we really like. You can tell from this, from this talk what I really like. Okay, uh, number 12. Uh, what is your approach in selling shares to reduce cost basis, Rick M? Uh, you know, look, that's all leisure to man. I mean, like, let's say I buy um, Apache at, at a terrible price like I did, okay? Let's say 60, 65. Well, if I sell that now, it'll look like I have a better cost basis. Who am I fooling? I'm fooling no one. Apache down 55 cents and Simrex up six tells you Apache did not deliver. But it's the assets that I like. I mean, if Exxon had any guts, it would go buy the company. Uh, but anyway, that's how I like to view it. It's, it. It doesn't matter the basis. Apache is my number one angry name, as you can tell, because I understand and I've done so much work on this, on this uh, uh, Alpine High. But without a takeover in the oil patch by any major, it shows you that, we don't, that they don't believe. And if they don't believe, it's hard for us to believe. Oh, all right, well, let me wrap up with a couple of thoughts here about what I think is going on. First, Disney. Uh, am I tempted to buy Disney? Below 100, yes. I think a long-term position in Disney is a good idea. I think that Bob Iger had no choice but to do it. I called it a Hail Mary pass, but maybe this is the Doug Flutie pass that's caught. I think it's going to take two to three years to make that one happen. Um, what do I think about the takeovers that David Faber talked about this morning with Charter? I do think that there's some deals in the work. Again, that makes me optimistic about that sector. But I do want to own Comcast at 40. I think it's a great idea. What about the big loser today? Priceline? Not yet. I do these videos. You can go over them uh, where I think I tell a lot of these stories. What other areas are really intriguing me right now? I mentioned credit cards because of Bob Lang. I think that those are good. I'm still looking for the stay-at-home plays. I think that those are excellent. Action, Activision Blizzard is that. I would buy Activision Blizzard right now. Uh, we do have the aerospace and Arconic. I would like to have another aerospace play. That's how good I think those are. Not airlines. We have that covered with Southwest Air. And then retail, I do think, is oversold. We're playing it with TJX. But I think uh, some of the apparel companies are also great ways to do it. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank everybody for your feedback. I know you probably think I get my, uh, I have an Apple Watch, and I get my alerts through the Apple Watch, and I just absolutely love it because um, I know exactly what's happening with the portfolio. Uh, I, I have um, a consummate belief that we are going to get a better price to sell the oils. I believe absolutely that our tech stocks are superior to, to almost everybody else's tech stocks in any portfolio I've seen. And most importantly, please keep asking questions. Keep talking to us. Keep telling us how we can make the product better because that's what we want from our club members so we can help you. Thank you very much.